insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Your hosts are Joseph and Madison Whalen, a father and daughter team making their way through the challenges of the teenage years. Welcome to Insights into Teens. This is episode 184, Helping Teens Avoid FOMO, or Fear of Missing Out. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my active and involved co-host, Madison Whalen. Hi, everyone. Interesting adjectives for today. <laughs> are you are you active and involved or no? Probably not today, but you know. Not so much, huh? Well, I know you're not feeling so good today. How was the rest of the week so far for you, though? Not terrible, I guess. That's good, I guess. I mean, you know, just trying to get back into the swing of things after Thanksgiving break, so. Anything exciting? I know you missed a few quizzes today because of absent teachers. Yeah, we're going to be doing all that tomorrow. So fun. Right. So one one exciting thing we did have to report today, we just got... The first sample in here, a piece of original artwork that you did uh, that was, uh, let me see the, the cup here. So this was uh, original artwork that you did for Boulder's Gate because uh, we've been playing the, the game quite religiously now. Yep. And uh, we just got some new, what are these, tumblers or mugs or what are these What are these things called? Well, they're not mugs. I'm assuming they're called tumblers. Tumblers? Maybe they're tumblers. Anyway, you too can own a custom uh, Boulder's Gate uh, piece of artwork from Madison. We can get you these tumblers for $20 each if you want those. Just write in and let us know. Uh, but uh, it's got all the, all the main characters. What your companion characters? It's got the pets, and it's got a nice little blank space there, so you can even color in your own your own Tav, whatever your custom character is. Anyway, it was worthwhile. I I, I think we had to plug it just because it was really cool. Because I like it. Yeah. Anyway, enough of the sales pitch. <laughs> um. So FOMO, which stands for fear of missing out, is a common issue among teenagers that can lead to feelings of isolation. It goes beyond the concern of missing a specific event and instead involves an ongoing fear of being excluded. Adolescents experiencing FOMO often believe that enjoyable and exciting activities are happening elsewhere without their involvement. On today's episode of Insights into Things, uh, insights into teens, they're technically both the same thing because everything falls on their insights into things. Yeah. Uh, disclaimer there. Uh, we're going to talk about FOMO, how it affects teens, and how to help teens, teens, not teams, how to help teens. They could be teams of teens. How to combat this very real issue. And we're already making up words. or sure. Not making up words. Going just off teasing. script. So it's very, it's a very fluid script that we have today. Pretty much. Uh, before we do that, though, I do want to put another plug in there for the uh, podcast itself. I would invite our listening and viewing audience out there to subscribe to the podcast. You can find audio versions of this podcast listed as Insights into Teens, or you can find audio and video versions of all the network's podcasts listed as Insights into Things. Pretty much anywhere you can get a podcast these days. I would also invite you to write in. Give us your feedback. Tell us whether or not you like our mugs. And uh, give us your suggestions for uh, show topics. We are available at comments at insightsintothings.com for email. You can hit us on Twitter at insights underscore things or X or whatever Elon's calling it this week. 
Uh, you can also find all these links and more on our official website at www.insightsintothings.com. Shall we get started? Sure. Here we go. So our friends at Newport Academy once again enlighten us for today's topic. So fear of missing out is a term that encapsul encapsulates a prevalent psychological phenomenon in today's digital era, especially in the context of social media and smartphone usage. This concept, while addressing a long existing human emotion, has gained significant relevance in contemporary society as evidenced by its addition to the Oxford English Dictionary in 2013. This inclusion marks a recognition of how its growing impact in the modern, digitally connected world has had an effect on everyone. The emergence and... I'm not even going to try that one. Proliferation of social media platforms have profoundly influenced how teenagers perceive and engage with their social environments. Platforms like Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Snapchat offer a continuous stream of updates and images from peers and acquaintances. These posts often depict the most enjoyable and exciting moments of people's lives, focusing heavily on positive and enviable experiences. This phenomenon leads to a distorted perception of reality among adolescents, who are regularly exposed to these highly curated and selective portrayals of others' lives. The constant exposure to idealized representations on social media can make teenagers feel that their own lives are comparatively dull or unfulfilling. The contrast between the exciting lives they perceive online and their own daily experiences can create a sense of dissatisfaction or longing. This is particularly impactful during adolescence, a time when social belonging and peer perception are highly emphasized. The disparity between the online world's highlights and their own reality can intensify feelings of FOMO, leading teenagers to believe they're missing out on experiences that everyone else seems to be enjoying. FOMO, therefore, is not just about the fear of missing out on events or experiences, but extends to a deeper concern about social belonging, self-esteem, and personal fulfillment in comparison to other in compar in comparison to others. It underscores the psychological impact of social media on young individuals, shaping their understanding of social norms and expectations. This digitalized phenomenon calls for increased awareness and strategies to mi mi mitigate its negative effects on the well-being of adolescents. Fear of missing out is particularly acute among teenagers, who tend to be avid users of social media, except for you, of course. Um, this demographic's engagement with platforms such as Facebook, Instagram, and Snapchat is not only frequent but often takes on a compulsive quality. Studies have shown a correlation between high levels of FOMO and intense social media usage. Teens typically check their social media feeds as one of the first activities in the morning, the last before sleeping, and even during meals. This pattern suggests a deep-seated need to stay connected, driven by the fear of missing out on something important or exciting happening in their social circles. The impact of FOMO is not confer... In, uh, the, the, you should stretch before we have these things. Maybe that's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The impact of FOMO is not confined to digital interactions, but spills over into the physical world, influencing behavior and mental focus. Teenagers experiencing FOMO may find it difficult to concentrate on daily tasks, such as driving or attending classes. The constant pull to check social media updates can lead to distracted driving, a hazardous behavior that endangers not only the teen... Dr uh, sorry. The constant pull to check social media updates can lead to distracted driving, a hazardous behavior that endangers not only the teen drivers, but also others on the road. 
In educational settings, the distraction can diminish their ability to engage with and absorb critical learning materials, impacting their academic performance. The pervasive nature of social media exacerbates FOMO, as these platforms are designed to showcase a polished, idealized version of life. Constant exposure to such portrayals can foster feelings of inadequacy and isolation among teens as they compare their everyday lives to the highlight reels of their peers. The comparison can create a sense of being left out or falling behind, which in turn can impact their self-esteem and overall emotional well-being. Addressing and managing FOMO is crucial for the mental health of teenagers in today's digital world. It involves cultivating an understanding of the curated nature of social media content and developing strategies to balance online engagement with real-world experiences. Encouraging healthy digital habits, promoting real-life interactions, and fostering an environment where teenagers can discuss and navigate these challenges are essential steps in mitigating the negative effects of FOMO. This approach can help teens build resilience against the pressures of social media and support their emotional and physiological health in a hyper-connected age. So they make an interesting point here, drawing the parallels uh, between FOMO and social media, in that what we see on social media really is not an accurate representation of reality. It really is a highlight reel. I think that's a great way to describe it. How do you, and I don't, I know you don't regularly use social media, but how would you differentiate the highlight reels that people put up there for their statuses and what they're doing and their influencer stuff and all that stuff? How do you, how do you differentiate that from reality and what, what their lives really are like? Well, a lot of times I find it kind of easy because when it comes to you know, certain influencers, a lot of the times they tr- they kind of like make humor out of their lives. And like, I always know that when it comes to humor, it can usually be pretty exaggerated. So I'm usually able to kind of differentiate between that where it's like someone like does something overly extreme and it's like, oh, that was kind of for comedic effect or just, you know, to, you know, make someone laugh or try to, you know, poke fun at something. Okay. And that, I guess that makes sense. I mean, as long as there's a, a grounded understanding in reality that what you're seeing online is not really what life is. It's almost like watching reality TV and expecting it to represent actual real life. It, it, reality TV has nothing to do with reality. Yep. Uh, and I think social media is the same thing. So if people are formulating opinions of themselves in their own lives based on that, that's kind of dangerous ground there. Um, In what ways do you suffer from FOMO? Do you suffer from FOMO? I know you're not a particularly social person. You You don't have these grand circles of people that you hang out with on a regular basis. Is FOMO an issue for you? It certainly can be, I'll be honest. Because, like, granted, while I don't have it in relation to social media as much as you know, some teens would. I do have it when it comes to just being around other people because I can see that there are like, at lunch, there are like groups of friends that hang out with each other and that, you know, talk and are able to, you know, crack jokes with each other. Meanwhile, I'm kind of sitting alone, you know, doing my own work. I'm fine with sitting alone, but it's like, you know, sometimes it'd be nice to have a group of friends to hang out with at lunch. Right. No, I understand that. Do you notice people in your class or people in your age range, are they as hooked on social media and have this burning need to be updated on a regular basis like the article seems to suggest? I mean, yeah. You know, there's a lot of kids that I know in my school who are either on their phones for like, you know, trying to check out what's been going on or they're on their phone to play some sort of game or they use their phone to talk to, you know, their friends. Now, obviously, I don't really know if all of them are like 
if it's always social media, but I do know it's kind of something that like a decent amount of people in my school um, are known for. Okay. Have you ever felt the need or the pressure to make your life seem more exciting for other people? Are you trying, like, if, if you're trying to impress somebody or something where, where having a very positive looking social media feed would kind of feed into that? Have you ever been in a situation like that? I don't think I've ever really been in a situation where I've, like, tried to make my life seem better than it is, at least in, like, my average everyday life. Because, like, the people that know my average everyday life, I don't feel like I need to impress. And when it comes to other people, I really don't even share much about that. So as someone that really doesn't talk to people or really try to engage with anybody that I, you know, don't already know, it's I don't think I've really had that issue. Yeah, that makes that makes a lot of sense. I mean, not being on social media certainly helps, I'm sure. That's part of it. Um, but the fact that you don't even have a need to try to impress people and the fact that your friends don't, don't have that expectation, uh, is really a testament to you and to your friends and to the character that, that you look for in friends. I think it's a compliment to you. Yeah, really what happens is it's just like, I leave stuff out. It's not that I like d try to exaggerate certain things. It's just like, like some more personal aspects about my life. It's like, I don't always tell all my friends. So that's the only thing I can think of, really. That makes sense. All right. I think we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, you can tell us how FOMO impacts mental health. Sure. We'll be right back. For over seven years... The Second Sith Empire has been the premier community guild in the online game Star Wars The Old Republic. With hundreds of friendly and helpful active members, a weekly schedule of nightly events, annual guild meet and greets, and an active community both on the web and on Discord. The Second Sith Empire is more than your typical gaming group, we're family. Join us on the Star Forge server for nightly events such as operations, flashpoints, world boss hunts, Star Wars trivia, guild lottery, and much more. Visit us on the web today at www.thesecondsithempire.com. Welcome back to Insights into Teens. Today we're talking about helping teens avoid FOMO. And now we're going to talk about how FOMO impacts mental health. The impact of FOMO, or fear of missing out, on adolescent mental health in the digital age is a growing concern, especially given the ubiquity of social media. FOMO, while not a classified mental health condition, can contribute to increased feelings of anxiety and depression among teens, often leading to detrimental effects on their overall, on their overall well-being. Studies have shown that teenagers who experience high levels of FOMO often report lower life satisfaction and more frequent negative moods. This link is particularly evident in the way FOMO interacts with social media usage, creating a cycle that can lead to stress, disrupted sleep patterns, and an overall increase in negative emotion. One insightful study involving college freshmen used daily diaries and questionnaires to explore the participants' well-being and life satisfaction, revealing several crucial aspects of how FOMO affects adolescence. The timing and occurrence of FOMO were noted to vary throughout the day, with an increase later in the day and towards the end of the week. This pattern suggests that the anticipation of missing out on social events or activities grows as the weekend, a prime time for socializing, draws near. Importantly, FOMO is not confined to any specific personality type. It affects a wide range of individuals, including both introverted and extroverted teens. 
This broad impact highlights FOMO's pervasive nature in the adolescent experience. Another key finding is the impact of FOMO on everyday activities. Teens often feel heightened levels of FOMO when they are engaged in necessary activities like studying or working, as they might perceive these responsibilities as barriers to participating in desirable social events. This conflict between obligation and the desire to be socially involved can exacerbate feelings of FOMO. The study also revealed that FOMO can lead to significant negative outcomes. It not only triggers negative emotions, but also serves as a major distraction. Adolescents preoccupied with what they might be missing out on can experience considerable emotional turmoil. This preoccupation can detract from their ability to enjoy present moments and engage fully in their current activities. Understanding and addressing the impact of FOMO is therefore crucial for supporting the mental health and emotional development of adolescents in our increasingly digital world. The correlation between FOMO and spending behaviors, particularly among millennials, sheds light on its broader societal implications. A recent study revealed that a significant portion of millennials, nearly 40%, have incurred expenses beyond their financial capacity, motivated by the urge to keep pace with their peers. This trend reflects how FOMO influences spending choices, pushing individuals towards towards purchasing experiences, events, and material goods to counteract the feeling of being left out. This phenomenon is especially pronounced in the millennial demographic, driven by a sense that others' accomplishments or experiences are in some way a loss to them, highlighting a competitive aspect of social comparison. The impact of social media on mental health is significantly magnified by the phenomenon of FOMO. In today's digital age, the urge to remain continuously connected and keep up with peers can lead to increased levels of anxiety, stress, and dissatisfaction. This persistent state of mental strain is not just an individual concern, but also a societal one, emphasizing the need for parents, caregivers, and the community to understand and address these dynamics. Recognizing how FOMO influences young people's financial decisions and mental well-being is crucial. It's not only about the immediate feelings of missing out, but also about the long-term effects on life satisfaction and emotional health. Young individuals, consistently bombarded with images and updates from their peers, can develop a distorted view of what is normal or desirable, leading them to make financial choices that are unsustainable or detrimental to their long-term goals. To counteract these effects... It's imperative to develop and implement effective strategies that encourage healthier social media habits. This involves educating teens about the curated nature of social media content, promoting a balanced digital diet, and fostering open conversations about the emotional impact of online interactions. Encouraging activities that are offline and focusing on personal interests and skills can also help to build a sense of self-worth that is not reliant on social validation. Cultivating emotional and psychological resilience is key. This can be achieved through developing coping strategies for managing anxiety, stress, and dissatisfaction. Teaching young people mindfulness, digital literacy, and critical thinking skills can empower them to navigate the complexities of a digitally dominated world with greater confidence and well-being. Addressing the pervasive effects of FOMO in the context of social media requires a concerted, uh, concerted effort from all stakeholders in society. By fostering awareness, promoting healthy habits, and building resilience, we can support the younger generation in achieving a more balanced and satisfying digital and real-life experience. Now, it's worth noting, that was a lot of material that we went through there, and a lot of it sort of kind of nags on social media. This is not a problem that is caused by social media. 
It is not unique to social media, uh, nor is it solved by getting off of social media. Fear of missing out is a legitimate emotional feeling that has long existed well before even the internet was around. Um, I can say as a young teen, I fell victim to this numerous times. Um, and they make a, a point of saying that it happens a lot on the weekends. There's not a lot of socialization that happens for teenagers <clears throat> during the week on their normal circumstances. So most of that dances or going to the mall or movies or hanging out with friends, most of that happens on the weekend. And that's usually when most of this sort of creeps up. For me, it was funny because I found it, you know, back when I was your age, the internet didn't exist. Yes, that's how old I am. We had BBSs, bulletin board services, where you would dial into computers over the phone line. And that was how, that was essentially what social media was for us back then. And what I found, there were times that when you tried to do that and get online with other people, you couldn't because the phone would be busy. And I found that's where I had my fear of missing out when I couldn't get online and I couldn't get to these social areas that I would hang out with, with friends. That's when I would feel it. Have you ever experienced a fear of missing out under any circumstance? I mean, I guess, um, thing is when it came to the school dances, I know for a while, a lot of my friends have been wanting me to go to the school dances and they only ever really went to one and that was like kind of an informal dance ever since sixth grade i haven't gone to another one uh and i know a lot of my friends particularly one is very keen on me trying to go to you know another one of the dances and i guess there was certainly like a i don't want to like let them down sort of thing but it wasn't enough to make me go to the dance nice okay so if you don't really experience FOMO the way it's defined here, have you ever been in situations where maybe you felt left out of something and that might be kind of contributing to this? I mean, yeah. Like, one thing I can say that I'm, like, it's not as big, but certain social trends that, like, you know, people like. Like, let's just say buzzwords i guess like there's words that there's slang that my that people my age use and use it on a daily basis and for a while i'm like what the heck does that mean i don't get it <laughs> and you know i'll kind of feel left out in that way or left out in like the new social trend of like oh there's this thing that everybody really likes and everyone's really into it and i'm like what is this right so I got you yeah, I guess in a way I feel that's kind of where I kind of feel left out. I'm not – it's not like an extreme thing, but it's still like, okay, I really don't get this. I got you. So you're not, you know, addicted or married to your social media, but you still keep up with your friends. What are some of the methods that you typically use to keep in touch with your friends and keep up on things? You know, just – Texting, saying, hey, how you doing? Uh, occasionally calling, and then with some of them, I've been hanging out with them. Okay. So. So, uh, I, ironically enough, it's more traditional methods that you have. Granted, texting's not traditional, but texting's kind of the equivalent of a phone call these days. Uh, since most people who have cell phones don't actually know you can actually talk to people on them. They use it for everything but phone conversations. <laughs> So in situations like that, have you, have you found yourself trying to get a hold of a friend and that friend's just not available and you don't know why they're not available and you may feel that FOMO feeling even for a brief period of time there? Has that ever happened? I mean, yeah, there have been instances where I've wanted to like talk to like a friend and they don't like respond back. Most of the time, it's not like I'm scared I'm being left out. It's like, oh, my God, what happened to them? Right. So it's a concern for them at that point. So anytime that you – sounds like – and I don't want to put words in your mouth. You can correct me if I'm wrong. But it sounds like anytime that you've had these feelings of perhaps being left out, 
it hasn't had a dramatic, dramatic effect on you. Not really. You know, it, your self-esteem hasn't been affected by it. You just, it's kind of like water off the back of a duck. You just sort of roll with it, it sounds like. Yeah, myself, I ruin my own self-esteem. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't. You don't need any help with that. I don't need any help with that. <laughs> okay. Well, that's another podcast we're going to have to revisit, I think. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to take another break. And when we come back, we'll talk about how to overcome FOMO, even if you don't have it. We'll be right back. Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Our husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. We'll look at the interesting and obscure entertainment news of the week. We'll talk about theme park and pop culture news. We'll give you the latest and greatest on pop culture conventions. We'll give you a deep dive into Disney, Star Wars, and much more. Check out our video episodes at youtube.com backslash insights into things. Our audio episodes at podcast.insightsintoentertainment.com or check us out on the web at insightsintothings.com. Welcome back to Insights into Teens. Today we're talking about helping teens avoid FOMO. And now we're going to talk about how to overcome FOMO. The strategy of limiting social media usage to combat FOMO, particularly among teenagers, has been increasingly recognized as a way to enhance mental well-being. A notable study titled No More FOMO explored the effects of reducing social media entanglement, ent ed 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 entanglement on emotional and physiological health, offering insights into the benefits of disconnecting from these platforms. The study involved 143 undergraduate students from the University of Pennsylvania. Initially, researchers assessed the participants' usual social media habits, focusing on their engagement with platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Snapchat. This initial phase provided a baseline understanding of their typical online behaviors. Participants were split into two groups. One group was instructed to limit their social media use to just 10 minutes per platform each day, while the other group continued their normal usage patterns. After three weeks, the results of the study were revealing. The group that altered to the 10-minute limit experienced a significant decrease in feelings of loneliness and depression compared to the control group. This finding suggests that activity reduced... This finding suggests that actively reducing time spent on social media can lead to notable improvement on emotional well-being. Participants in both groups became conscious of the impact of their social media interactions. This heightened awareness points to the benefits of mindful engagement with digital platforms, indicating that a more thoughtful approach to social media can enhance emotional health. Interesting. Interestingly, both groups, including those who didn't change their social media usage, showed reductions in anxiety and FOMO during the study. The outcome implies that simply being more mindful and aware of social media use, even without imposing strict limits, can have a positive effect. The study's conclusion advocates for restricting social media use to about 30 minutes per day, suggesting that this can lead to significant improvements in overall well-being. The findings reinforce the idea that balancing, connecti that balancing connectivity with healthy technological boundaries is crucial for maintaining good mental health. This approach highlights the importance of managing digital interactions in a way that supports rather than detracts from emotional and physiological health. So obviously all of those techniques to overcome this kind of center and revolve around the premise that social media is a major contributor. We already acknowledge the fact that it's a contributor, but it's not the only factor. So there's a number of other techniques that we can talk about. 
Addressing and overcoming FOMO involves more than just reducing social media use. It requires understanding its root causes and actively engaging in positive strategies to enhance well-being. This means acknowledging that the issue isn't solely the fault of social media. Instead of getting caught in the trap of constant comparisons with others, teens can adapt several effective approaches to better manage FOMO. Encouraging teens to maintain a gratitude level... uh, No. Sorry. Encouraging teens to maintain a gratitude journal or a positivity notebook helps them focus on the positive aspect of their li- aspects of their lives. This practice of reflection and appreciation can bolster self-esteem and diminish the sense of missing out on something supposedly better. Another beneficial strategy another beneficial activity is volunteering, which allows teens to contribute positively to their community. This is not this not only provides valuable social interactions outside the digital realm, digital realm, but also instills a sense of purpose and connection to a larger goal. Spending time outdoors is another crucial strategy. You know, you and I love to do that. <laughs> Being in nature, away from technology, offers a respite for the nervous system and can mitigate the negative effects of FOMO. Physical activities and the calming influence of natural surroundings positively impact mental health. Building authentic connections with peers is also vital. Strong understanding and caring friendships can significantly reduce the emotional stress associated with FOMO. Pursuing passions, be it through creative activities or hobbies, is also instrumental in combating FOMO. Engaging in activities that teens are passionate about can enhance their self-esteem and provide a sense of achievement, counteracting the feelings of inadequacy often fueled by FOMO. Lastly, it's important to recognize when FOMO becomes overwhelming. If a teen struggles to detach from their phone and this behavior interferes with their daily life, it may indicate underlying mental health issues such as depression or anxiety. In such cases, seeking help from mental health professionals is crucial. Early identification and intervention can effectively address these concerns. Overcoming FOMO involves a multifaceted approach that empowers teens to appreciate their lives, engage in fulfilling activities, nurture real-life relationships, and seek professional help when necessary. By focusing on these diverse strategies, Teens can effectively lessen the impact of FOMO and improve their overall well-being. So I think throughout the discussion here, we've kind of established the fact that you're not particularly susceptible to FOMO. Do you have any friends that you think may be going through some of the things that we talked about here that some of these techniques might actually help? I mean, yeah, probably. Um, I might not know them off the top of my head or know which friends would probably be more susceptible to it than others. But yeah, I do believe that uh, some of my friends are probably dealing with something like this. Um, And hopefully, you know, if, you know, I end up bringing this up to them, they'll be able to, uh, it'll be able to help. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's my... It might be one of those things where you just never talk to them about it and and they don't even realize they might be going through it. So do you do any of the techniques that they talked about here or a gratitude journal or, I know you don't engage in outdoor activities a lot, but (laughs) pursue hobbies and stuff like that. Obviously, given the artwork that we have on the cup that we have now, we know you do pursue hobbies. Um, Do you find solace in any of these types of things? Uh, well, keeping a gratitude journal, I don't really do that. I remember I tried doing something like that, and then it was just, I stopped. <laughs> it so, wasn't very gratifying. Yeah, so, you know, that's not really something that connects with me as much. Maybe if I actually put in the effort, but, you know. Okay. Uh, volunteering, I want to volunteer at some point. I haven't yet. Or I'm, I'm working on that. That's up there with the uh, gratitude journal. Uh, spending time outdoors, obviously, I don't do that. Uh, 
building connections with my peers. I've technically been doing that with specific peers, but, you know, peers nonetheless. Okay. Uh, pursuing passions. Clearly, we that's probably one of the biggest ones. Yeah. Uh, so pursuing passions certainly resonates with me. Um, so, yeah, I guess the last two are really... Okay, well, well, it's good to see that some of these things are, are activities that you engage in because not only do they help with FOMO, they help with a, a number of other emotional management type things that we have to deal with on a regular basis. So in your experience, how important is it to have strong and real life connections with your friends? And what are your some of your techniques for establishing and maintaining those? Oh, interesting that you're asking me that. Um, I do think it's important to have at least someone that you can talk to. Just one person. It doesn't need to be, you know, an entire group of people. If it's an entire group of people, cool. If it's like one or two people, cool. I do feel like having that support group is certainly good. Uh, and I don't think anyone should feel, you know, less adequate if they don't have a huge group of friends uh, over like someone else that they know. So, you know, just having at least somebody I feel is good. Quality over quantity. Yep. That makes sense. Uh, and for getting said friend and maintaining that relationship, um, I guess just be yourself and someone will probably come around and like you and enough to hang out with you. And in order to maintain that relationship, just keep up open communication and again, continue to be yourself. Don't, you know, put on a mask for anybody. Don't pretend to be something you're not. I guess that's the best advice I can give because I really don't. Well, and I think that's sound advice. I think being genuine is important. And and I think FOMO kind of lends to, to this genuine, being genuine to yourself type thing. Um, when When people are more concerned about what other people think and they start acting and behaving and doing things for the benefit of others because they want to fit in, then they're really not being themselves. And there's only so long that you can keep up that facade, right? So if you make friends with someone on false pretense, you have to pretend to be that false person whenever you're around that other person. And I have to imagine that's just exhausting. Yeah. Right? And it's going to make you miserable. And then the other person's going to think you're disingenuous at that point in time. Yeah. So you're right. Be yourself and you're going to find some people like you for who you are and some people won't. And we can't please everybody all the time, right? Yeah. So be yourself. Like yourself first. Once you like yourself, then you think you'll find other people are going to like you as well. And then you won't have to go through FOMO. You'll be in that social circle. Yay. So I think that kind of wraps it up for us today. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. Come back. We'll get your clothing clothing thoughts. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think of clothing today? No. <laughs> we'll get your closing thoughts and then uh, finish up with the business of the podcast. We'll be right back. All right, so to everybody out there, I just wanted to say that being able to connect with people in a way that's not artificial and also being genuine to yourself and the way that you want to live your life, I feel is very important. Obviously, FOMO doesn't isn't just in effect when it comes to things like social media. It's it's the fear of missing out. It's the fear of missing out on stuff that your friends can go through. It's the fear of missing out on stuff you see on social media. It's just the fear of not being able to accept your life as it is and appreciating what you have. So really, all I'm going to say is that, you know, find value in your life. And even if it's not as grand as someone else's life or you think that you could be doing better or anything like that, I still think that appreciating the life that you have is uh, is good. All right. I think they were sage words, as always. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important to emphasize the one point that you made, and that's appreciation. You know, appreciate what you have and who you have. Don't 
don't covet what somebody else might have because the perception that you have of what that other person's life is like probably is distorted. It's not reality. Everyone posts all these wonderful things on their social media that they're doing. I'm going to this place and having fun with this person. You know, they're not, they're not posting the negative stuff up there usually. So just remember, you got to take the good with the bad, but appreciate what you are, who you are and what you have and work from there. Uh, I think that's it for the podcast today. Before we go, I want to once again, invite you to subscribe to the podcast You can find audio versions of this podcast listed as Insights into Teens. You can find video and audio versions of all the network's podcasts listed as Insights into Things. Uh, We're anywhere you get a podcast these days, Apple, Spotify, Google, etc. I would also encourage you to write in and give us your feedback. Tell us what you think. You can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. You'll find high-res versions of all our videos on YouTube at youtube.com slash insights into things. We do stream five days a week on Twitch at twitch.tv slash insights into things. Or you can find links to all those and more on our website at www.insightsintothings.com. And you. And don't forget to check out our other two podcasts, Insights and Entertainment, hosted by you and Sam now, and Insights into Tomorrow, hosted by you and Mommy now. Very good. That's it. Another one in the books. Bye, everyone. Bye.